one. Good morning. Welcome to the fourth quarter set, uh, fourth quarter all resident meeting. Normally we meet every quarter. This has not been possible over the last two years uh, because of COVID. And we always have met in the assembly room and people were in person. And that was always the best environment because we could ask questions and get answers. But uh, because of restrictions, this is the next best thing. So this morning you're going to be hearing from the chairman of the board of trustees of Timbercrest, which is her traditional responsibility or duty or pleasure, uh, depending on which way she looks at it, uh, to uh, share with the residents a report from the board of trustees. So I would like to introduce to you Jan Falls Brown, who is the chairman of the Board of Trustees, and uh, turn this meeting over to her right now. Jan? Thank you, Jim. The following is a report from the Timbercrest Board of Directors to discuss the affairs of Timbercrest and keep you informed of current issues and future developments. This document also serves as a 30-day notice of residential rate increases that will go into effect January 1, 2022. According to federal regulations, a 60-day notice is required for healthcare and Crestwood. That notice is also being issued today and new rates for healthcare and Crestwood will go into effect on January 17, 2022. I had hoped, like Jim, that we would be able to meet in the assembly room for the annual report to the residents this year, but meeting in large groups is still not advised. Also, I'm involved in Brethren Benefit Trust Board meetings at the time of this meeting, so we have recorded my report in advance. I regret that I cannot be with you to take your questions. I always enjoy interacting with Timbercrest family. The Timbercrest Board has been meeting by video conference, except for our August meeting, which was before the Delta variant raised its head. Um, our last meeting was last Saturday. One of our board members reached the end of his third term and is inel ineligible to continue. Dana Crawl has served on the board and the finance committee for nine years, but he has been involved with Timbercrest since 1968. As a matter of fact, he was the first resident. During construction, before residents had moved in from Mexico, there was some indication of things going missing from the Timbercrest site. Orville Sherman asked if Dana and one of his colleagues would be willing to provide security by lodging at the new Timbercrest site. Dana probably knows as much about Timbercrest as anyone. He will be sorely missed on our board. Two other board members have decided not to continue their board participation and we will miss them too. Ken Metzger for his unwavering focus on cash flows and Becky Myers for her expertise in staffing and training. We have one new board member this year who likely is known to many of you. Steve Hammer from North Manchester knows Timbercrest well. For many years, Steve has served as the liaison for Timbercrest's investment portfolios. Steve is a retired attorney and investment advisor. I've had the honor of working with Steve in other nonprofit settings, and I have learned to trust his insight and probing questions. He is a great addition to the Timbercrest board. So board members for 2022 include Jeff Bauman of Warsaw, David Cox of Kokomo, Eunice Culp from Goshen, Gretchen Gibbs from Richmond, Steve Hammer from North Manchester, Eric Helfrich from Cherubusco, Kathy Long of North Liberty, Kelly McKee in North Manchester, Byron Smith from Bourbon, Carol Waggy of Goshen, and Lori Zimmerman also in North Manchester. Much of the board's work is done in committees. Eunice Culp chairs the Governance Committee, and Jeff Bauman is the new chair of the Finance Committee. 
The Advancement Committee is chaired by Carol Waggy. We have augmented the board committees with an ad hoc compliance committee. Regulations in the area of compliance continue to be more onerous. The compliance committee will support management's compliance duties. We expect that due to the increase in the importance of compliance, this committee eventually will be added as a standing committee of the board. Before we talk about the challenges that Timbercrest faces, I want to say that as a board, we are grateful for how well you, residents and staff, have weathered the pandemic to this point. When news of the pandemic first broke in the nursing homes in the state of Washington, we were overwhelmed with concern. Over the last 20 months, the management team and staff at Timbercrest have done a heroic duty of keeping residents and staff as safe as they could. And you, the residents, have done a heroic job also of keeping your spirits up and doing what needed to be done. I know that you are all weary, residents and staff alike, but it seems like you were mostly able to maintain a collegial and positive attitude through the troubled times. I expect we're not out of the woods, but things certainly seem better than they have for a while. 2021 has been another challenging year. We are so grateful for the management team, staff, and residents who worked together to make the year as good as it could be. The challenges stemmed not only from edicts issued from oversight organizations, but also from staffing shortages and decreased occupancy. Back in the summer, the board began, began a strategic planning process to better position Timbercrest for the future. We have worked on vision and mission statements and will soon move to identifying possible scenarios to improve Timbercrest's long-term sustainability. It is certainly a timely activity. I, for one, still intend to make Timbercrest my home sometime in the future. Even with the best of intentions, we have faced multiple challenges this year, the greatest of which has been in healthcare. There's been a decline in occupancy in healthcare in part because at the outset, a wing for isolation and quarantine needed to be established, reducing our capacity by 25%. In addition, nursing staff suddenly were in high demand in hospitals, nursing homes, and long-term care facilities. Whenever demand is high for a, pro a profession, there are pressures on wages to compete for the available workforce. In a small rural facility, it became increasingly difficult for us to attract and retain nursing staff. The sad result is that we could not accept our own residents for rehab to home. At least four residents had to find alternatives. In early October, the execu executive committee of the board and the chair of the finance committee met to consider a proposal by management to increase nursing salaries by five to $10 an hour and other hourly wages by three to five dollars an hour. In this short time, it appears that we are receiving the benefit of that decision, retaining current staff and attracting new employees. Through the pandemic, interest in neighborhood homes has remained high. We can hardly turn them around quickly enough for those who are interested. We are thankful for all the new arrivals that we've had here at Timbercrest. In the manor, however, it was more difficult to show apartments and receive new residents. Now that regulations have changed and the manor does not suffer the same degree of lockdown requirements, we are seeing more interest in manor apartments also. We hope that will continue because we have a significant number of vacancies. As it stands, increased wages and lower occupancies have taken their toll on the finances. Even though we received several government grants in 2020 and 2021, we expect a significant loss in 2021. And because of continuing uncertainty, we have not yet passed a budget for 2022. The Finance Committee is continuing to work with the management team to develop realistic projections. Needless to say, this year's budget deficit and next year's uncertainty leads to a monthly rate increase for everyone at Timbercrest. We are implementing a 15% increase in monthly and daily rates across the board, and with inflation looming, that may be a conservative increase. 
We do not take these measures lightly, but we are charged with the long-term viability of Timbercrest. As always, if you find yourself in financial stress, please contact Byron Brunn, Chief Financial Officer. As part of its charitable mandate, Timbercrest receives contributions from churches and individuals to be able to provide assistance to residents in need. Under normal circumstances, we would have time now for questions and comments. That's not possible on channel 98, I believe it is. So I would encourage you to email me if you have questions or concerns or would like to continue this discussion. I would be happy to set up a time to talk with you. My email is included in this letter. Thank you, Jim, for allowing me to present. Thank you, Jan, for your report. We wish you could be a more rosy report, but we know that we live in perilous times and that we know that uh, we, we will survive. And we are appreciative of the management team that has taken care of us for the last 20 months or more under these difficult situations. In closing, I would like to spend a little bit of time of educating because I know we have some new residents that's moved into Timbercrest in the last few months. And some people maybe are not aware of resident council. Resident council is a group of 10 residents elected by the residents uh, of those 10, four have to come from independent living and six come from living in the manor. The purpose of the council is to be a conduit of communication between residents and administration. We meet once a month with the administration with Stan Nelsinger and Christy Harris and, and we share with them concerns that residents have brought to us. We also serve as a sounding board for the administration to ask us what we, our opinions of something they're thinking about. So the communication is a two-way street. We are aware that uh, in a facility such as Timbercrest or any major facility, there's always people maybe with misinformation, maybe not being reported properly. I would like to take some time just to share one incident, and this was only about a month ago. So this is a real situation in which uh, a resident came to me and said, uh, Jim, I hear Tindercrest has bought some more farmland. And my initial reaction was to open my eyes and dropped my jaw and said, I don't think so, but it was never mentioned in resident council, but I will check it out. And this person who was reporting to me, getting the story from another resident, thought it was farmland across the street from Chestnut Court uh, Drive. This would be the farmland north of where Morris Wagner lives in the big white house just across the street. Uh, from Timbercrest and so I went to Stan and, and I said Stan we got this little rumor going around is it true or is it false and of course he said there is no effort made to buy more land at the present time so I reported it back to the one that came to me and I asked that person to go to the one that brought the message to them and clear it up so one of the jobs of a resident council is not only to provide communication, but it's also to put out brush fires. And every institution has that. And I had that as when I was principal of the junior high school. We had brush fires, people always saying stuff that was not accurate. So I, I want the residents to know that the resident council, which is a body that has no power, no authority and no money to do anything but to listen and transfer uh, communication. We, we cannot change policy, we cannot add to policy, we cannot delete policy. That's the Board of Trustees responsibility and not ours. I would like to encourage people, and I know there are some people reluctant to do this, but I would like to encourage people to, 
If you have a question, ask a member of resident council. Those members are listed always in the timber line, which we get monthly. Uh, we have four new ones starting December the 1st uh, on, on the resident council, Ann Meyer representing the uh, manor. And we have three new ones from the independent living. We have uh, uh, Corrine Spencer, Carolyn Bowyer, and Dean Beery serving his serving the residents of independent living. They are available for your concerns. I think it's also important to know that Stan's door is always open. You can go directly to him if you desire. And I understand there are people that don't like to do that. So, so I'm not saying you have to do that, but, but you do have resident council to uh, respond. I would like to congratulate the new officers of resident council. Al Williams has been uh, chosen to be the president. I will be leaving uh, at the end of this month as, as president. It's been a good ride. I've enjoyed it. I've had a few people say to me, I'll bet you're glad to get off of there. And I, my answer is very frank and honest. No, I'm not. Because I've had a good experience being on the resident council. So I, I ask for you to cooperate. I ask for you to know that there is a body of people that uh, are interested in taking your concerns and sharing it with administration. And administration, when these concerns come to them, they immediately take it to the department where it's involved. So uh, we've had good response from the, de the department chairman, the maintenance department, uh, food service, housekeeping, wherever a concern is expressed, those people react. You might not always get the answer you like, but you will get an answer. When I was principal of the junior high school, I had four possible answers. One was yes, we'll do it. No, we won't do it. Wait and see, maybe. And my last response was, you gotta be kidding me. So, so I'm not saying we use that one last, uh, the last one often, but it is a response. So many people think that if they don't get what they want, they haven't been listened to, and that's not the case here. You, can, you are always listened to. You might not get the response you like, but you are listened to. And I think that we need to be mature enough to understand that we don't always get our way. And I have a lot of empathy for the administrations doing, taking us through this minefield of COVID experiences. We keep saying, when will we get back to normal? I'm not sure we'll ever get back to normal. We might be living normal now, but I hope not. But as a resident council member, I'm, I'm appreciative of the leadership that we've received from the board and from, and, and from management. Give your support to the members of the board. I would, I would name the other ones, but I'm, sure, I'm not sure I can remember all of them and I don't wanna leave anybody out. I do know who the officers were and I, I've mentioned that. So we appreciate you listening to this program. We hope that you are a little bit better informed and we hope that you uh, know that there is means of communication, that if you have a concern, you can share it with somebody. So in closing this program, this will be my final act as president of the resident council. And I guess I have one word to leave with you, which is a part of my life. God is in control. Don't worry. Thank you.